You are now tuned in to Go Time Dolphins with Charlie Touche and Kadeem Simmons, the Miami Dolphins podcast that's for the fans and by the fans. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. And it's your time. Going all out when it's go time. I ain't wasting no time. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. Cause it's your time. Lay it on the line when it's go time. Don't waste no time. Hello, Go Time Dolphin fans. Are you here? Are you listening? Are you paying attention? Um, on the last episode, we spoke about you know making sure that you do the do the usual: share, like, subscribe and turn notifications on. And we said that we're going to explain why you need your notifications on on YouTube. So we are approaching the leader. And over here at Go to Dolphins, we thought we would mark it with something different. So our first episode of the new league year, Mr. Charlie, Mr. Charlie Touche and I will be going live. Go Time Dolphin live episode. So turn on those notifications so you know when we're going live. You can join us in the chat. You can chat to watch. You can ask us questions. You can hurt abuse at Charlie because he said something, you know, which you don't all agree with. But Go Time Dolphins live new season. Mr. Charlie Touche, how are you? I'm about to go live. I'm about to go live. I'm just saying, Kadeem. Uh, we said we were going to go live for a long time. So this is this will be the beginning of our fourth season together, right? Yep. All right. So we started in 2020. That was the yep. the beginning of our first. That was our first season, and there was no video. Then 2021. We went to YouTube? I don't think so. I don't think so either, bro. I feel like 2022 was our first uh, YouTube year. I but anyway. Any, I, anyway. I I that, but yeah. Anyway, we, we've been going through the progressions. And we said we we're going to go live eventually. And now we're at a point where it's like, you know what? It's time. We're about to go live. You guys are going to be able to catch us. You know, I, I didn't want to. I, I don't want to tell everything. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, I, I don't. I don't spill too many other beans, right? So we're gonna go live, and you you guys are gonna be able to catch us going live more often than what you think. So um, turn on notifications. Make sure you su- subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, we'll be streaming on different platforms live as well. So I'm excited, man. 2023 season. I like it. I like it a lot. So I'm just did, did, looking at our first, yeah. Oh wow, no, September September 10, 2021 was our first YouTube episode. I, Week I said one, that, Miami I, I Dolphins. Said, I said the second season we went we went on YouTube. Yeah, I think I've I've I got my date mixed up. I thought it was our third season, but you know what? Like you're having one time just flies, and the last I guess two years on YouTube. And three years, you know, in general, has just been, just been fun. Looking at um, looking at our backgrounds, our settings, our cameras, like the growth from, you know, our first YouTube show to now has just been remarkable, and we're gonna keep on growing. Kadeem said our growth as his internet was 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 spotty. Like, dang, but we ain't grow to the better internet though, huh? Listen, I've I'm back at home. Or back at my mom's, and yeah, the internet right now is just sometimes it happens. I don't know why. I've never been able to work out why, you know, it'll be fire and then we go live. And but yeah, some something obviously got to be sorted by the time we go live. So I know you don't drive, Kadeem, but when you go to let's say a I don't even know if you guys call it a, a shopping center or somewhere where you need to park your car. 
what do they call that place in in in, in England? What is it called where you park your cars? A we don't we don't call it a parking garage. This is like ask me to name like Bob Marley songs and my mind went blank. Right now, my mind it don't, it don't got to be a garage. I'm not necessarily talking about the garage. So let's. Ah, uh, you know what? Wembley Stadium, right? When you when you park your car, car what park. is it? Car park. Car park. Yeah. So we call them parking lots. What do you, what do you call the thing on the side of the road where pedestrians walk? So you have cars driving on the road, and then you walk on the side. What is it on called? The pavement. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. It's it's, it's called a pavement. <laughs> we call it a sidewalk. Which y'all call it? Y'all call it a sidewalk? It's... No, not at all. On the pavement, bro. Can you imagine just like and hey, get on the pavement? Like we say, get on the sidewalk. I'm trying to say, like, I think we also call it a curb. I mean, we don't call it a curb. The curb is what prevents the cars from getting on the sidewalk. Yeah. Just just, just as a heads up, I apologize if things are spotty on YouTube right now. This is making my life an absolute nightmare. And I'm trying to work out how to fix things on my end. And not really ideal. So apologies, bear with us as we try and sort out my internet. I want to. I want to say because I have a brand new computer next to me, and I'm trying to like you know fact check, stack check. But I also just have a feeling it's one of those nights where my internet wants to mess up, and it happens. I ain't gonna lie, you was doing good before we started recording too. We was in there. It's one of those things where. Yeah, it will be completely fine. You know, it's having it was, we were off air for about fifteen minutes having a conversation, and the moment I recorded it was like, nope, drop bandwidth. But people aren't here to talk about um or to hear us talk about my internet issue on a Thursday night. To hear to talk about you know the Miami Dolphins football. Um, it's been a a somewhat interesting week. Um, before we delve into, I guess, the topic of the day, Charlie, I sent you... Hold on, bro. Phone away. It's Go Time Dolphins, the Miami Dolphins podcast that goes not only across the pond, but across the world. I'm your boy, Charlie Touche. Got my co-host, Kadeem Simmons, with me. It's always for the fans and by the fans. Your favorite podcast, favorite podcast. Kadeem just wanted to run off on the plug, bro. You calling your own no huddle, you know what I'm saying, and not even giving the play to the receiver. Like, you just about to run a run play, and since you called a run play on your no huddle, you just felt like the receivers don't need to know the play. Like, that's that's how you just try to run off on the plug, Kadeem. Yeah, but sometimes you got to call an audible because the play isn't quite going, or defense end up a certain way, and right now the defense is showing blitz. Because my internet connection is that bad. I'm trying to scramble and move around this spotty internet. Hmm. So I I apologize. Um but yeah, I was saying I sent you a tweet, um, an alleged tweet and 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 an alleged quote from NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell at the Super Bowl. Um I haven't been able to verify this tweet, but um what this to you uh, essentially quoted Roger Goodell as saying was that in like the NFL offices, everyone thinks the Miami Dolphins have the best um, alternate uniforms and he doesn't know why they're not permanent. Now, I can't, I don't believe Roger Goodell would ever say that. That seems like something which fans want him to say, but obviously. The Miami Dolphins uniform is always a, I don't want to say a testing subject, but one that comes up quite a lot. Um, What did you make of, let's call it the fake quote for now? And, you know, I don't know if we should call it the fake quote. We call it the alleged quote. So 
I haven't got the chance to watch it. I was actually going to watch it. And my thing is, I don't think it's far-fetched. I think the, the, the league knows what the numbers look like for jersey sales and what's hot and what's not. They know uh, trends. They have analytics for all that. Shout out to Scott Van, Van Pelt from ESPN. He was like, oh, uh, the Dolphins were playing during the season. And the, he was like, oh, aside from everything else, Miami, you guys need to make this your permanent uniform. Like, look how good these things look. This is what he Scott Van Pelt is saying at the time. Like, yo, why has how, why how come Miami hasn't brought these uniforms back? Is what what they were saying. Or he was saying. So, I, and I think it's just the consensus. I think if if we took an unbiased fan poll from all thirty two teams and we ranked all the uniforms without bias. I think the Miami Dolphin throwback uniforms would be amongst the top. But um yeah, I I think there's too many uh I think we we're going to go into it eventually, but it's just too much to to make permanent and we are we already know that we trying we here on Go Time Dolphins we want them to be permanent though, for real. So I finally I finally found the 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 quote and it comes from a Twitter Twitter account at throwbacks forever. And the account is called Make Throwbacks Permanent. So I'm I'm just saying, but the quote is allegedly, well, frankly, nearly everyone in the league offices thinks that the Miami Dolphins throwbacks should be their primary uniforms. They are the one team in this league that I think most fans would be in favor of the old look coming back. I think the Kelly Green Eagles jerseys would be one which a lot of fans would be like, hey, you might want to you know, make that your permanent jerseys. Um, but the Dolphins are definitely up there in terms of, I guess, coolest throwback jerseys and one which, you know, fans have obviously campaigned for, you know, online at least anyway, to have a, to have a permanent return. Yeah, I think this needs a whole episode. I think I think the, the the throwback uniforms need a whole episode. Um, there's no way we could touch on it enough of it. But you know what this is right here, Peter? You know what these are? Right. I want to call it a biscuit. You guys call it a cookie. So it looks like a biscoff biscuit. But would you call it, it a biscoff cookie? It is. It's a it's a cookie, a biscoff cookie. And and for those of us that are listening to the podcast. Uh, I had it turned around on on the video version, so he couldn't see the name, and he got it right. And I turned it around, and you know, free ad advertisement for them. But listen, I'm, I'm gonna eat this on the podcast. These cookies, bro. These are the cookies you get on the airplanes. And 2022, I flew so much, bro. Cause you, you know, I started a business, all the good stuff, and I I was just flying everywhere. And then I got these cookies on the plane. I'm like, bro, why don't I just have these in my house instead of only being able to get them on the plane? <laughs> so I had, to, I had to find them. And then lo and behold, I am a, I am a, a customer of these boys. Like these cookies are the best cookies ever, especially with some hot chocolate. Listen, let us know in the comments below what are the best biscuits biscuits slash cookies um be it chocolate chip I, I feel like the other day we had a conversation about biscuits top, as well top, top three cookies hold up but why you call them bro why did you say biscuits slash cookies why you couldn't call them cookies slash biscuits because i'm from the uk and i say biscuits first so all right so let me do this let us know in the comments the top three cookies you know what i'm saying yeah, but we did have a top three cookie. Shout out to Josh Casker. We did have a, a top three cookie um, uh, debate, and I felt like oatmeal raisin was really disrespected, bro. You know what? Since we're talking about being disrespected and top three and oatmeal raisin being underrated, let me ask something, Kadeem. And we're going to turn this into a football conversation, a Miami football conversation. How come nobody... It's saying the Chargers got it wrong and should have drafted Jalen Hurts. 
That's a really good question. Um, but I think it's because, you know, like Justin Herbert for is Justin Herbert has, has been labeled a social media quarterback, which was essentially that you turn on social media, you know, on, on NFL Sunday and you're, you know, see the clips of these wow throws from Justin Herbert. Oh my days, you know, the arm, the arm strength, that cannon of an arm, his ability to make these, you know, Madden like plays into these extremely tight windows, like, oh my days. And I think that's allowed, allowed this narrative that the Chargers don't need to, to essentially find a new quarterback. I don't think he's missed any games through injury since being named a starter. And people say that he doesn't have the weapons and all that kind of stuff. Now, we've had many Justin Herbert and Tua Tungabailoa debates on this episode, on, on this show. The biggest quarterback debate in not just Dolphins YouTube, but NFL YouTube is coming up shortly. Again, turn on notifications because you will not want to miss that episode. But it's a matter that, yeah, I just think Herbert's availability and his ability to make wild throws has meant that people aren't calling for, you know, or people aren't saying the Chargers should have drafted Jalen Hurts over um, Justin Herbert. Or we, but despite the fact that, yeah, Herbert hasn't taken his team to a playoff win yet. Bro, all I'm saying is, and I'm not even going to run long on this because I'm saving it for the quarterback episode when Sherrod Steve drop, tries to jump big. You know what I'm saying? I'll be like, bro, I'm just saying no one is saying Jalen Hurts should have got drafted over Herbert. You know what I'm saying? But everybody should is saying what Sam. And I think it's kind of died down. I think I think Tua played well enough to, to calm some of the noise down. It's never going to die down all the way. Until next year when we win the Super Bowl, according to Charlie Suchet. So yeah, it, it'll die down eventually, and um, and then I'm sure it'll pivot to oh the Dolphins won in spite of Tua. That's what they're gonna say. So but whatever. So yeah, I just find it funny. Like oh, Jalen Hurts is in the Super Bowl. No one is saying oh Jalen Hurts should have got drafted over Herbert or Tua or whatever. And then you have Tua being drafted one spot in front of Herbert. And the conversation was, y'all got the wrong quarterback. So the Chargers didn't get the wrong quarterback when you have Hurts playing as good as he's playing. I'm just saying, there's got to be some nuance in this conversation. And just know the quarterback ranking episode is upon us. It is coming up after the Super Bowl. And it's going to be bigger and better than ever. It's not just going to be the opinions of myself and Kadeem and Sherrod Steve. There's going to be way more. It's going to be we, – we, we struck gold last year with a quarterback ranking episode, so we're going to do it bigger and better this time. Um, about that same draft, Kadeem, do you remember who was drafted second overall in that draft? Uh, was that Chase Young? Oh, you might, you might be on to something, Kadeem. You might, you might be a little nice sometimes. You feel me? <laughs> um, Chase Young was drafted second overall in that draft towards ACL. Um, and the commanders are either going to give him his fifth-year option or not. So there's a possibility that Chase Young hits the market next year. Are you in for Miami going after Chase Young? Like, you know what? We didn't think this dude would be here. You know, and, and it takes it, – it's going to be a lot. Like, that means he doesn't ball next year and then they don't franchise tag him. So, there's always a possibility. But I'm just saying, is there is there a world, Kadeem, where you would be interested in Miami either trading for Chase Young or acquiring him if he becomes a free agent? So, if I was to – if I was to make a move for Chase Young, I would do it before – he hits the open market because I don't want to get into a bidding war, war with anyone else. And I would do it 
if I moved on from Emmanuel Ogba in the offseason. So it's like, okay, Ogba's gone. And I've essentially just got Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb as my defensive ends. I've cleared up cap space. I pick up the phone to Washington and say, hey, you've got a player who you aren't sure what you're doing with. Let's, let me make that easier for you. Here's, insert, reasonable trade value. You bring in Chase Young. You, I would extend him because if you fifth-year option him, it kind of gets a bit messy. Um, if you And again, your boy Chris Greer is a somewhat mastermind with NFL contracts. So it's like, okay, you work out a team-friendly or not just not a team friendly deal, but a contract which allows you to, you know, if it doesn't work out after two years, you can move on, all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, Chase Chung is someone who he might just need a a new setting, you know, a better team. And if you're rotating between Bradley Chubb, Jalen Phillips, and Chase Chung in a Vic Fangio defense, that could be a lot of fun. So obviously, we're going to be up against the cap. Jalen Phillips has started start, has started to come on. We just paid Bradley Chubb a buck fifty. Um, two years from now, maybe a year and a half from now, maybe it's just next year. You wonder, uh, do we have to trade for Chase Young? Because we just traded for Bradley Chubb. So what would it take for a Chase Young? And I think you can find yourself in a world, Kadeem, where it's almost like, well, we got two on a rookie contract. You know what I'm saying? Well, we got Jalen Phillips on a rookie contract. Agba goes, how good is Melvin Ingram a year and a half from now? Do you trade another pick for Chase Young and then have the rotation of Chase Young, Bradley Chubb, and Jalen Phillips? And by the time Jalen Phillips is up for his contract, then you move on from one of the two big contracts that you paid. Bro, that is a rotation. That I assure you would be the scariest defensive end rotation in the history of the NFL, and I am all for it. I have gotten to a place, Kadeem, where I am on the LA Rams time zone. We don't need these picks, we get rid of the first round pick every single season. We're trying to win right now, we're trying to win the Super Bowl right now. So, I don't need to have the first round pick every year no more. I need to win the Super Bowl. So, if that means having cap issues potentially because we have the best defense that in, in, in the history of the NFL. So be it. That's the price to pay. That's the price of admission. That's the cost of admission. And I'm all for it. So yeah, man, I, I, I have my eye on the chase young situation and I like it, but we have some news this week. We didn't get, uh, what is it? Mike Munchak? Mike Munchak. Yeah. We didn't get offensive line coach Mike Munchak, but we did get Barry Butch. Is it? Isn't it Butch Barry? I don't know. Is it? So I typed in. So when I was doing my research, I'm like, okay, Barry Butch, and it is Butch Barry. It is Butch Barry. You, you yeah, good, you good. like, it's, but Barry Butch sounds better than Butch Barry. But you know, same way in Butch the Barry. States. We gotta get the name right. It is Butch Barry, but Barry is, Butch yeah. does sound better. Yeah. But so we get Bushberry. He is, if you're unfamiliar, he was the offensive line coach for the Denver Broncos. Now, can you start working on the PFF uh, O line grades? Can you see where um, the oh we down? <laughs> it's, it's, it's the, down. Hey, hey, I, I, I <laughs> yeah, noticed. Down. Hold on, I noticed that Kadeem's internet is back to being crisp, but now PFF is down. It's, it's all right. We don't have much technical difficulties uh, lately. We haven't had them, uh, but anyway. So my thing is, I believe the Denver Broncos O-line was ranked 13th, I think. Now, if that's the case, their O-line was ranked 13th and they were down two tackles, I believe. One tackle for sure. So to have an O-line ranked 13th overall in the NFL and you're down two tackles, and I could be completely wrong. Matter of fact, I, I might be wrong, brother. Didn't we have a, a – didn't we bring up the, the O-line episode and the, the Broncos was in the 20s? You know, we got – That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, we literally discussed the offensive line. PFF was working fine, and now it's not. If you keep on going, I can quickly try and dig through our archives, 
see yeah. if I can get everything. So yeah, yeah. So we we're gonna find out where the offensive line rank for where Denver's offensive line rank. But I got a text from Ter- Sherrod Steve. And Sherrod Steve in in the he sent me an article from the myhighreport.com. And it says Broncos players applauded during team meeting upon learning O-line coach Butch Berry was fired. I had just woke up. I had just woke up when, when Steve texted me this message. Like, I'm talking about the crack of, like, I ain't even get to say my morning prayers yet. I'm still, like, wait, it's, it's, the sun is out. You know what I'm saying? I'm still, bing, like, uh, who is this? Is it work? You know what I'm saying? And it's share out Steve, and I read it, and I thought it said, we're appalled. I thought it said the, the Broncos team was appalled that they lost uh, the O-line coach. But it didn't be appalled. It said they applauded. And I'm like, oh, no, this is not good. <laughs> you feel me? So all that being said, the Broncos have celebrated that they lost their O-line coach. What do you make of that, Kadeem? So I found the – so it was our – Episode, basically three episodes ago discussing you know the Applebaum firing and the Miami Dolphins were 22nd according to PFF offensive language yeah the Denver Broncos were 21st literally uh, right I, I, above thought, us. I thought I heard 13th but so we'll go with that we'll go with 21st so it was 21st now like you I also saw the the narrative coming out of Denver that this was, or you know, Butch's firing was celebrated. Um, and there was a tweet, I believe it was from Brent Albright, that basically said that his his way of coaching wasn't very personal. He would leave messages or notes in players' lockers, which is quite impersonal. You would think that, obviously, you know, Hey, a coach, coach, a player, be like, hey, you need to work on this, this, and this, all that kind of stuff. Um, so Miami Dolphins Twitter, obviously, is like, what have we done? Like, we've hired the one guy that no one wants from a Broncos offensive line, which wasn't amazing. Um, shout out to Chris Kaufman, who has this Twitter thread dated February eighth. Um. And I'll read it out, and I can get it up. I don't know why I'm looking at one computer when I can literally get it up on, you know, for everyone to see. So as I am bringing up this Twitter thread, which I think is quite um, useful, quite resourceful, but also essentially gives reason for optimism. Um, Yeah, it's. I think it's a situation where... Mike McDaniel knows Butch. I'm just going to call him Butch. Apologies. Um, He knows him. He, I would assume, trusts him. And if he feels that this is a higher which makes the Dolphins better, should we not at least give him the benefit of the doubt, get to, you know, get to at least off-season, or, you know, sorry, you know, pre-season, and see how this offensive line looks, you know, once we put pads on and all that kind of stuff. I just had a piece of this Biscoff cookie. Yeah, I I can see. (laughs) And I'm like, how did Kadeem know these were Biscoff cookies? How did you know that, bro? Um, Just from the packaging. Like, I think it's the exact same packaging in the UK. So, yeah. That's why. I just... So yeah, man. Um, I'm. I don't want to say I'm concerned, but again, the Dolphins managed to have the 22nd rank O line according to PFF last year. Everyone that's a Dolphin fan knows the turnover we had on the O line last year. Any rational person would consider the injuries that we had on the O line last year and would say. You know what? This O line is better than the twenty second ranked O line in the NFL. Just where we ended up. But if I give Applebaum credit for having the twenty second ranked O line with all these injuries, 
I have to give Butch Berry credit for having the 21st ranked O-line, according to PFF, with all of his injuries. So I am not, I am not as disheartened as Dolphins Twitter is. I'm okay with it. I'm like, yo. Now, what I don't like, I'm real with you. What I don't like, Kadeem, is Nathaniel Hackett was the head coach in Denver. First time head coach, and it was a circus. They were really the laughing stock of the NFL. So bad that Russell Wilson brand, his brand took a hit. Like, bro, are you Russ or were you just a product of a system or environment? Or did someone else build your brand? So because Russ was so bad and Nathaniel Hackett was so bad and there was such a laughing stock in Denver, let's ride, that I, Barry, Butch Barry being a f- affiliate or associated with, with, with Denver, it's like, man, when you hear the, when you hear the, rumors or reports coming out that he wasn't re- very personal and he'd rather leave messages in their lockers instead of talk to them as men. I don't like that. I, I, I don't like that. So I don't know, bro. I, I'm going to have to, yo, he's our coach. You know, again, I trust Chris Greer and I trust coach McDaniel. That is all. That's all I need is, 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 their careers are on the line. You know what I'm saying? So I trust them. I can't put the, the mistakes of yesteryear on this Dolphins organization right now, this Dolphins front office right now. So, yeah, we've had so much turnover. Flo went through five O-line coaches. Gates didn't have an O-line coach, whatever. All, all, all the old coaches that couldn't fix our O-line ever. I can't put it on this this front office. So I have to trust them until I can't trust them anymore. And if I'm being real with you, how bad did this coach really do? He had the 21st ranked O-line with no tackles. So he could take our O-line, which I think if everyone was healthy, could have been a top 15. And let's see what he could do with it. So I'm glad you said that. So Chris Kaufman in his um, Twitter thread says, you know, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see the tweets on the screen. Um, Denver went from a 16 rank in 2021 via, e- e- via ESPN's team pass block win rate metric to number nine ranking in 2022. Um, Denver also went from a number 15 ranking in team one block win rate in 2021 all the way to a number four ranking in 2022. So Denver defensive line improved in 2022 under Butch Barry, according to ESPN's two primary next-gen stats power line metrics. Um, he goes on to add that, you know, the loss of Denver's best offensive lineman, Garrett Bowles, for over 71% of the unit snaps in 2022. Um, Russell Wilson holding the ball significantly longer than Teddy Two Gloves, who's now in Miami. Um, and then he also says that Denver's O-line's average PFF grades paint a similar picture. Offensive grade ranked 14 in 2021 and 17 in 2022. Pass block block grade went from 10 to 15. Pass block efficiency went from 18 to 16. Run block grade went from 18 to 15. There's essentially a lot of, you know, stuff in the Twitter thread. But he ends with basically saying... When you have this much disagreement between data and law, it bears investigation. The answer may not be what people think. Analytics and advanced metrics have never and will never tell the complete story, but neither do locker room rumors perpetrated, so perpetuated by a team insider. Yeah, to kind of delve through a lot of that and to kind of also look at, you know, what happened in Denver last season. It was an absolute mess. An absolute mess. The you know the offense led by Russell Wilson just got pelters over and over again. So of course there'll be people inside that locker room who, you know, don't like Butch Barry's um 
way of coaching or you know they, they just didn't mesh I'm sure there will be Miami Dolphins you know defenders be it defensive linemen DBs any all that kind of stuff who will say that um Brian Flores's way of coaching nah not for me um some people just don't mesh and if those stats are true and actually if we really delve into the numbers the Broncos offensive line was actually really good or pretty good then you know we sh- we should be with our offensive weapons our quarterback and an improved offensive line if stays healthy it, this could be a good this could be a good hire bro i'll take the 15th ranked pass block win rate any day bro if i think that's what you said 15 or 16 something like that pass block win rate bro the dolphins pass block win rate was 32nd for like the past two years it's the worst in the league for the past two years do you know who our quarterback was for the past two years tua ningamanu olipola donnie tonga valor you know what i'm saying so it's like yo you have to protect this dude and we haven't been protecting him and unlike Tannehill or russell wilson or nathan P- peterman Tannehill gets the ball out uh, Tannehill, tua gets the ball out fast so it's not like he was holding the ball and oh, he looks he's making his old line look bad because he's holding the ball too long. Nah, the man's getting the ball out and he's still getting smashed. So, and I, I don't want to say that was this year, but uh the two seasons pr- prior, I want to be very clear. So, yeah, man, give me the 15 rate pass block r- win rate any day, bro. Uh, how you, you ended up 21st overall, I'm pretty sure there's some nuances in there and we'll figure it out, but. I'm I'm okay, bro. Like I like I said, I'm not as disheartened as Dolphins Twitter is. I'm okay with it, bro. Yeah. Listen, and again, it's it's always I say it's always, it's never good. You know, when when we brought in Mike McDaniel, the quotes coming from, you know, the 49ers locker room was how how could you let this guy go? Like he was that dude, all that kind of stuff. You, you know, you want to hear that after or you know, after you make a hire. But you know, taking it with a pinch of salt, which we obviously looked at the other day, um, take it with a pinch of salt that a lot coming out from Denver, especially under Nathaniel Hackett, probably won't be good. I, I agree, the impersonal touch, if true, isn't a good look. But, you know, these two guys worked together in San Francisco, didn't they? I'm not sure. I would, I would. Oh, I did. I did see his previous teams. One of them was was San Francisco. Yeah, was and he also worked at yeah. university. Yeah. So again, Mike McDaniel knows what this guy is like. And let's be honest, given how Mike McDaniel is, do you really think he would hire someone who, you know, is impersonal or quite standoffish? I, I, I personally don't think that would work. It'd be like, actually, do you know what? I need vibrant energy. And if anything, it could be a situation where Butch Bivey did do that. And Mike McDaniel's like, that's not going to run in Miami. I need you to work on yourself and to, you know, try and coach this way. And hopefully it's a matter of, okay, cool. I can do that. I can improve. I've learned from what happened in Denver, in this new regime. This is how things are done. I would say I'm going to fall in line, but that sounds quite, you know, like Brian Flores, militant the guys, everyone in line, marching robots. Like we don't want that. So, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, make. I'm going, I'm going to make an opinion a few weeks into the season when two is, you know, upright and healthy. <laughs> I think with Coach McDaniel making the the hires that he wants to make, I prefer I prefer that. As opposed to the Dolphins telling him, hey, you got to do this. Hey, this is what we want you to have. You know what I'm saying? Because now he feels like, yo, I could do my own thing. I could do me. Dang, you see that tricep today? You see that? That's a tricep. Something you might not never know about. But. (laughs) So, yeah, man. But what I don't like about Coach McDaniel with his coaching hires is the fact that when we, when the game is on the line, 
the system that you have in place is not working for the team because we can't get the plays out in time. We can't get the plays out in time. The, the communication, the operation isn't where it needs to be. That's on the head coach. The challenges, those are your assistants. You put these assistants in charge of telling you when they need to tell you the challenge. And that's not working either. So, yeah, I would like for him to have his own hires, but, bro, you being the head honcho isn't as nice as we like it, isn't working as nice as we would like it to be. It's not a smooth operation. So, coach has to get better being a, a better uh, general of the franchise when it comes to his personnel. And he has to get better at getting the plays in on time. Kadeem, bro, I know I, I, we recorded so many episodes that I know that you have a black equality Dolphins beanie, right? Yes, I do. Why would you not rock it right now with the yellow and black Puma jumper you got on? So I was going to do that, but it's extremely hot. And I thought I'd mix it up because I think I bought it the other day. So, they want to wear the same stuff. So, let's go with a green and orange beanie with the yellow and black jumper, as opposed to the black beanie with the black and yellow jumper. To be fair, wearing yellow and black on a Dolphin podcast is quite bold, to say the least. Um, but, again, for those watching on YouTube, eh, pop quiz. Mr. Charlie Touche, what football team is this? Can I get multiple choice? Uh, I can give you the country that this team plays in. That's not that's not gonna help. Not even a little bit. I ain't gonna lie to you. Ah, uh, I thought. Okay, let me multiple choice, multiple choice, multiple choice. Um, think, think. I'll give you some time to come up with a decent multiple choice. So it'll be, you know, like, I, I don't want you to just shoot out three teams and they're all like, I know, you know what I'm saying? So take your time, come up with some teams for multiple choice, and I, 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 I'll knock it out for you. I've got, I've got three teams top of my head. So Let's go. the first team, Bayer Leverkusen. Mm -hmm. The second team, Borussia Mönchengladbach. I'll say that again. Borussia Mönchengladbach. And the third team, Borussia Dortmund. I'm going to go with A. By Leverkusen. You are wrong. It is C, Borussia Dortmund. I'm trying to think of any famous players who you would know plays for them. Um, do you know Jude Bellingham, who plays for England? Sent him I, ain't gonna lie, I don't even know the pronunciation of all three multiple choice things. You just <laughs> get, like, I, like, I can't even understand. Which, I wouldn't even know how to spell none of them. Like, what are you talking about? That was all came out like it was a different language. Well, yeah, it's a it's, it's a German team. It's um, I went to... So, Borussia Dortmund are one of the most famous clubs in club, in club football. And when I found out I was having a son back in 2014... Me and my two friends were like, or me and my three friends were like, we need to go away because probably the last time we're going to do this in a very long time. So we headed to Germany. Um, and yeah, what what Borussia Dortmund? They lost two one. I got this jacket, and prior to my three week vacation, which was actually two weeks, but prior to my two week vacation in January, that was the last time I was on the plane in tw in twenty fourteen. Charlie, before we move on quickly, I found something which I want to share with you. Is that okay with you? Let's get it. So, this is a website called nflpenalties.com. And judging from what I just said, you can obviously tell what this website is. Um, I wanted to look at the penalties committed by the Denver Broncos in 2022. Um. Can you see? Should I make that bigger? No, nah, you're good. I'll make it slightly bigger just in case. So, I don't know why I'll ask you then. Um, let's get rid of that as well. So, if you're watching on YouTube, um, this is... Oh, these need to go away. This is a table of the Denver penalties committed by position during the 2022 season. The offensive line 
committed 29 penalties for 211 yards. What do you make of that? I need it one more time. I'm following up on some Dolphins news that is is it might be breaking. So I, give me the numbers one more time. So the Denver Broncos offensive line, uh, 29 penalties for 211 yards. That's a lot. But I don't know what it is compared to. It sounds like a lot, but I don't know what it compares to to the rest of the league. Can we get can we get get it right with the rest of the league? Yes. Yeah, so if you bear with me, I've I'll start with Miami because you know we are Miami Dolphins podcast, and that's technically all I care about right now. Um, the Dolphins, at a position you could name, not player. And actually, I can go back and look at the penalties that they're giving up as well, whether it's holding, all that kind of stuff. The Dolphins' offensive line committed 35 penalties for 235 yards. So a lot more penalties, but the yardage wasn't that different. Um, if we then look at league-wide stats, let's go by uh, league-wide stats, offensive... Oh no, this is just team total. Did you say the Dolphins had 35 penalties? O line penalties? Yeah, 35. What, what did the Broncos have? The Broncos had, I thought it was 29. Because I, I, I did feel like the Dolphins had a lot of O line penalties this year. No, they did not feel like that. Yeah, it, it, it did. That's why I was a bit like 35, I guess. Kind of makes sense. So yeah, the, the the Dolphins had six more um offensive line penalties than the Denver Broncos, and I guess for the Broncos to break it down by what penalties they had, um, they had twenty three full starts, twenty offensive holding. The league average for full starts is eighteen point seven two, and the league average for Offensive holding is 20. Um, I guess we can look at delay of game. Um, they had six. The league average is 5.28. Who, who, who has six? Is this us or the Broncos? This is Broncos. What did we have? Because I feel like our delay of games were mostly attributed to coaching. Yes, so... The Miami Dolphins in 2022. Let's have a look. Full starts, 22. Again, league average, 18.72. Offensive holding, 15. League average, 19.9. Um, delay of game, 8. 5.28. Yeah, this is not looking good for the Dolphins compared to the Broncos. I'm trying to see face mask four. So I'm, I'm now back to the Dolphins. Face mask four, illegal formation two. I feel like there were so many illegal formation calls. Yeah, uh, bro, I could. I remember two off the top. What that were both Tyreek Hill. So I don't know how. Bro, remember to see this. Is what I'm saying, bro. I feel like I. Don't, I don't know what is constituted as a drop when it comes to statistics like this because we've seen more drops than what we have on paper. Um, and then for that to be an illegal formation or, well, I guess it was illegal shifts too. But, hey, let's get in the bonus time, Kadeem. Cool? Yeah, all good. Let's just, you know, make already, it already, already. Already. Hey, <sighs> we announced we're going live soon and we have some compound information with going live that you guys are going to want to check out uh, next episode. So y'all know what time it is. Follow us the bonus time. Stay positive. Test negative. For Kadeem Simmons, I'm Charlie Touche. Thank you for tuning in this time. Make sure you catch us next time on Go Time. Already. Got to make them lose their mind when it's your time. And it's your time. Going all out when it's go time. Go, go. I ain't wasting no time. Got to make them lose their mind when it's your time. Cause it's your time Lay 
get on the line when it's go time. Go, go, don't waste no time. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. And it's your time. Going all out when it's go time. Go, go, I ain't wasting no time. Hey, you seen the uh, former Miami Dolphin head coach Brian Flores got a DC job? Yes, I did. Um, Minnesota Vikings. Would would you say it's surprising there's been nothing in terms of rumors or anything about him getting a head coaching job? No, I'm, it wasn't rumors that he'll get a head coach job, but he was. He, I thought he, I thought he went on a couple of interviews about head coaching. I think he went to the Colts, or but here, here's the thing: I think he was supposed to take a couple of interviews, but he ended up just taking the the Minnesota job, almost like. Hey, I don't feel like there's anything there. I'm not even going to take those interviews, but I know this this DC job is guaranteed. So, but I I don't know if he went on an interview or not. And um yeah, but the reason I'm bringing that up is because friend of the podcast Snowman, Javon Holland put it on Twitter and I can't remember what he said. I want to say he said hell yeah, flow. I think he said that. Something like that. Something along those lines, yeah. Something along those lines. Hell yeah, Flo. Something like that. And Twitter came from. Ah, they ain't come from. But but they're like, they didn't, they're like, yo, like why why do you like Flo? He's not our coach, or he sabotaged to it. You know what I'm saying? Some a whole bunch of stuff, you know, Twitter. Um, I thought it was out of pocket. They they didn't have to go at him like that. Uh, and this is the problem with our, our fan base, bro. Jalen Waddle came out, I want to say, towards either before the Bills game or after the Bills game, the loss. I can't remember. And he was like, bro, the fans so fickle down here. Basically, he said that. And then we all know that Javon Holland had the Instagram story that went live. The Instagram live, they said, man, y'all fans so fake. I was like, it's crazy. And then we all clearly see the 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 attacks to against. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, Fans really do play a part in if in people wanting to play here in Miami. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't rock with y'all fan base. I'm, I'm good on y'all. I don't, y'all don't appreciate appreciate nothing. As if y'all won Super Bowls every year. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's something to be be monitored. Is our fan base is not, bro? We don't know how to have nice things, bro. Like we haven't had nothing nice down here, and uh, for the Dolphins at least, like the Miami Heat, the, Mi- the, the Miami Marlins, they do their thing. Florida Marlins, they do did their thing. But the Dolphins get some type of buzz, and then the fans don't know how to act. So, yeah, man, I think our fan base got to be better. Yeah, I, it's it's a weird one because you know Twitter is a vacuum, and you know the. The stadium, like when Tua was playing at, at an MVP level, Hard Rock Stadium were chanting MVP. Like, you know, people inside the stadium, they're like, no, nah, this is our guy. You're always going to get people on social media who disagree or who want to be controversial. Like, anyone who wants to send anything negative to any player, let alone, a, you know, a Dolphins player, you are a special kind of human because like yo like are we, are we really doing this and obviously like you know friend of the podcast Javon Holland said hey Brian Flores drafted me like he you know he get I'm, I am where I am because of Brian mm-hmm. Flores someone was like no you are where you are because of you it's like dude he he knows that he put in a hard work but Brian Flores and the Miami Dolphins were the team that you know drafted him in the second round it's one of those things where no matter what happens again Prime example, once Brian Flores left and, you know, Tua was asked about Brian Flores, essentially the only thing he could say was he gave me my chance. Like, he's the one that drafted me. And I'm sure there's going to be 30 for 30s and all these kind of stories, you know, years down the line. Three rings about, later. Yeah, about the, the the truth behind that relationship. But, you know, I'm sure that Tua being Tua, deep down, is like, listen, whether... Brian Flores wanted me or not, he is the one that drafted me. So there's always going to be that at the very least. As for the rest of Dolphins fans, very quickly, it's 
it's why sometimes you just have to ignore social media and why some players will be like, yo, these Dolphins fans, they might be fickle, they might be ride or die. But, you know, if you attack one of our own, not named too well, they normally kind of, you know, all battle together and defend the team, I guess. I mean, the the two are mic'd up with Flo and two are mic'd up with McDaniel day and night. Day and night. Uh, uh, um, who sings that song, Kadeem? Kid Cuddy. Boy, you was, you was sitting on that pitch, boy. You knew that was going to be. You knew you was going to hit that one. You knew you were going to make contact on that. You seen the pitch, and you was like, oh, I'm sitting on this one. I hope he asked me about this one. That was that was uni for me, like, what, 2008? Like, I remember, like, when I did go out of uni, that that song, like, you're in the, you're in the club, and like that bass line drops, and I was like, ah, and drinks everywhere. Like, yeah, I'm a, I'm not a Kid Cudi fan, but I know a few of his songs. So that song was two years old before it went, before it blew up. Little Nugget took two years for that song to blow up before it went mainstream. What's your Super Bowl prediction, Kadeem? I think the. I think the Chiefs win it, um, but I think that Eve, like, it, I can't see it being a blowout. I just think as long as it's close, you can't write off the Chiefs, and I think the Chiefs will just about have enough to to get past the Eagles. Score prediction, I couldn't tell you, but I'm going to go Chiefs over Eagles. How about you? I don't know. I don't know. I'm a bet man too. I'm not betting on this game. Is Mahomes really hurt? Is his ankle a problem? I don't know. I do know. Mahomes only has one ring. Rodgers only has one ring. There aren't these quarterbacks that have multiple rings that everybody wants to say, you have to have one of these quarterbacks. Well, where they at? And how many rings they got? You know what I'm saying? I do know that much. And if Mahomes does get this ring, then he has two rings. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like there's these group of quarterbacks that everyone likes to say, oh, you got to have this type of quarterback. Oh, yeah? And if I don't, then what? I have as many rings as all the other quarterbacks? You know what I'm saying? None? You see what I'm saying? So nil, as y'all would say in, in across the pond. So No, in, in that situation, we'll say none. Like, we we'll wouldn't say nil. Yeah, so... um. I don't know, man. Who wins the Super Bowl? Feet to the fire. <sighs> Give me the Chiefs. Feet to the fire. But there is something to be said about having a good O-line. For someone who has beat the drum and said, I just need two to have an O-line. For the Eagles to have the number one O-line in the league, that's what got them there. That's why Jalen Hurts looks serviceable. As good as he does. That's why Miles Sanders is a, is a running back in the NFL. Like, Miles Sanders, are we really thinking Miles Sanders could go on any other football team and ball like he's balling? No. So, yeah, man, there's something to be said about an O-line. And if the Eagles win this Super Bowl, just know that that quarterback conversation is going to be real hard for, for Shirai Steve because the, the whole O-line should get MVP instead of one person. Thank <laughs> you.